Hi, I've been in the mood for Spooky. And what's better at Spooky than Darcy Coates? So welcome to a Darcy Coates reading vlog because I have just been in love with Darcy Coates recently. So I'm gonna continue this high. I'm gonna read more Darcy Coates. I'm gonna keep you updated on my thoughts for Darcy Coates. And hopefully we will fall more in love with Darcy Coates. Now drink every single time I see Darcy Coates in this video. I dare you. I triple doggy dare you. I am starting with Craven Manor, which I don't actually know that much about. I just know my sister has previously read it. She gave it three stars, I believe. She enjoyed it. And she's a harsher critic than I am, believe it or not. So I think I will like it. I'm hoping I will like it. It's a haunted house story and we'll see where I go from here. Check back in with you guys soon. Okay, so it's been about an hour since I last updated you on what I was reading, which was just the introduction to this. I'm not very far in. According to my Kindle, I'm on page 49, 18% in, so about six chapters in. It became an impromptu buddy read with Kaylee, Lexi, and Mel, which is a lot of fun, and Deb is joining us too. I will have links down to all three of their channels and then Deb's Instagram down below if you want to check them out. I obviously enjoy all three of them as I talk to them a lot lately. So far, this is the least atmospheric of Darcy's that I've read. There is a lot of building up to the setting, not as creepy of a setting. Like normally Darcy like throws you into the creep factor and this one just doesn't as much. We also are working a little bit harder to get the reasoning for our main character to do this thing that they're supposed to do. So essentially in this book our main character gets a job, like a random letter that says there's a job opening for them and we're doing a lot of work as the author to try to get us to understand why this person is so desperate that they will accept this job offer at a very very creepy manner that's like 200 years old and so much dust looks like no one's lived there for literally 200 years and he's gonna be like the gardener there. Um, so there's a lot of work to get us to believe that. Have I fully believed it? No. Do I think I have to maybe just suspend disbelief and just believe that maybe he is this desperate that he needs this money so much that he would go live at this creepy mansion that says to not have guests and to not go out after dark and to never go up to the tower and has these really creepy rules? I guess I have to, but I'm still really enjoying it. I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to see what's really happening. We've gotten a little bit of just like setting building, not necessarily like creepy yet, but just we're seeing, I think we're seeing the lead up to the creepy and there's like the picture on the wall with like an emotion on the face. It's a little bit like, hmm, what, what's that about? But yeah. I'm gonna keep reading and I'll keep you updated. Okay, we've reached creepiness. Some creepy things have happened. I am intrigued. I need to keep reading. Good morning. Um, I'm tired today. I slept in. It's about 9.30. I slept in probably till about 8.30 and then laid in bed for a good hour. So I'm starting my work day now. But I stayed up a little bit late reading. So I got to about 50% in the book. And I will say so far, this has been my least favorite Darcy Coates. I don't know if I've already said that, to be honest. Last night's a blur. I don't remember anything I told you. Oh God, I didn't even drink last night. But I feel like I drunk all night, which I hope it's not a sign of me getting sick. That would really suck. But I just, I'm not as invested. It is my first male character of Darcy's and I'm curious to see if I just never like the male characters as much as I like the female characters. They're a little bit harder to relate to maybe because, well, I've talked about it before on my channel and it's a very unpopular opinion, but I feel like females, they're not as bad as males who write female characters, but I also find that sometimes when a female writes a male character, they suffer a little bit and I just don't find them super relatable because of that. Like, I don't know men who act this way and you know what, maybe that's just my experience versus someone else's experience. So I try not to like let that ruin a book and it's not ruining this book. I'm still really, really enjoying this book. It's sitting at about a three star for me, which is the same that Carol Haunt got. Although Carol Haunt started at a four the entire time. We've just really got into like ghost things, but I just, this main character just seems to not be affected by anything, which is kind of bothering me. Like he's just like, 
eh, whatever, I need the money. And I just feel like realistically, like, I don't get the sense of so, I don't really get the sense of desperation. I just get the sense of like, he's okay with what's happening. And that's all. Mel has been texting us about a new Darcy Coates book. And now I'm intrigued and want to read that one like ASAP. And so this video could just be, I don't know, however long, however many Darcy's I read this month is probably what this video is going to be. But yeah, um, join me on my new obsession and I won't be sprinting, I won't be reading Gal- uh, I won't be reading Craven Manor again until Lexi sprints tonight because Lexi has sprints going on tonight. I'm going to join her like in the comments. I won't be there. I'll be there next week, but that doesn't affect you guys at all. So I don't know why I'm telling you that. I'm gonna join her in her comments and continue Craven Manor tonight and then Maria also has sprints tonight but hers are a little bit later so when Maria starts I'll be joining her in her comments. Both of their channels are incredible if you like spooky books. So if you like this vlog, if you're in this vlog to because you like thrillers and horrors and you're you're watching this vlog for that reason, go subscribe to Lexi. Her channel's Books with Lexi. Uh, I've been addicted to it lately and addicted to spooky books and she's probably the reason to blame. So definitely go check her out. She also, she reads like mostly thrillers. Horror's new to her this year, but she's really loved horror. She also reads a little bit of sci-fi and I, I've seen her dapple in some fantasy, but not like high epic fantasy like I do. And then Maria, is Maria might read that, who you should also subscribe to if you even just like remotely like my reading taste. <laughs> like anything fantasy I like, go, if you like it, go subscribe to Maria. This was too much energy for me. I'm going to go edit a video. I have an iced eggnog latte, it's delicious. But I finished the book a couple days ago. I figured I should update you. I don't have that much to say. I feel like I've already said all my thoughts on it. In the end, I still enjoyed this book. I had a fun time with it, but it's a lot cozier than the other books I've read from her. Now, I think I might have done myself a little bit dirty. I think I've read Darcy's best books already. I've been researching like crazy because honestly on booktube, there's not like a really good, like this is where to start. These are my favorites. Darcy Coates books. The only one that I have even seen is Aaron's and I will link Aaron's down below. I do love Aaron's. I watched it but normally I watch like a bunch and then I kind of can see the comparisons on which books people like and which are like less loved but I was really struggling to find anything on this so I went back to the roots and I went to book bloggers but I don't know any book bloggers and so it was kind of hard to like be able to trust their thoughts and feelings about it. Overall, I think that Gallows Hill, Carol Hunt are like the most loved. Obviously Gallows Hill being her newest one. And then I think From Below has a pretty good creep factor. Both of those were published this year according to the stats. Um, so I might have done myself a little dirty because although on this channel I talk about a love for self-pub and I do love self-pubbed, I've read about 30 self-pubbed books this year, whether that's fantasy, horror, or romance. I think that there's some incredible self-pub books out there. I understand that sometimes traditional publishing can do something great to a book. There is this idea that traditional publishing are the experts. So if you get a book traditionally published, they have expertise, they have time, they have money to put into this book. I think Darcy is now an independent, like, Darcy now would still be considered indie, I think. She isn't technically published by one of the big fives, but Sourcebooks, which is like the overhead branch, is still a pretty big publisher. So like, depends what you count as indie. But I think that her newer released books may have gotten a little bit of help with that in mind. I think that they may have been a little bit more well-developed for the audience that is me <laughs> and other people who don't read as much horror. So we tend to pick up more of those traditionally published things. It's definitely steered into a proper direction for me. I still really enjoyed this one, but I do think that there was inconsistencies in it. I do, however, really enjoy that this book went somewhere no other Darcy I've read so far has gone. Even though it's been the most cozy, it did some darker things to it so I don't know how to explain it. I know a lot of people didn't love the main character in this one. He didn't overly annoy me. I just think that a lot of this book is just accepted and it, it didn't feel true to the human mind that you would just kind of accept everything that happens and be okay with it. I needed a little bit more desperation added into it. I've been talking for five minutes about this book and I don't 
and I literally told you I had nothing to say. So I don't know what's wrong with me. Other than that, I don't know where to go. I think I could go elsewhere in terms of not haunted story, like haunted house story. I know that Voices in the Snow is very well loved. There's the Hunted and then there's the Parasite one, which are very different to the, her other stuff. So I might have to go in that direction, but I'm really feeling the haunted vibes. So we'll see. This entire vlog is going to happen at my desk and I'm so sorry. I just keep having my camera here and so this is where I update, but normally I try to be better at like moving it around. But I just started Hunted by Darcy Coates. I got the audiobook and I've read one chapter and I'm so excited. This left me with that Darcy classic throw you in creepy atmosphere. Like I'm so excited to learn what's happening in this book, which is a feeling I didn't get with Craven Manor. So I'm super excited for this one. I'm very, very much excited and I can't wait to continue it. So I'm leaving you now. Oh, I should tell you that what Hunted is about, except for I don't really know what it's about. I just know it's not Darcy's classic haunted house story. Every once in a while she comes out with something that's like From Below, where it's a different setting, a different vibe, but she typically still sticks to like some kind of creepy factor. Like she has Parasite, which is aliens, and I think Voices in the Snow is zombies. Um, I don't really completely know what Hunted is about, but I'm excited. Okay, I'm on chapter 23. You think I would be better at just like pulling this up first, but I'm not. Okay, I'm, I'm, I just started chapter 23. So I wanna say I'm about 50% into this book. I'm actually really intrigued. It's not like any other Darcy I've read, which is super fun considering like how alike her haunted house stories can be. And reading this one has really put me on par with something that Kaylee said to me the other day. Me and Kaylee from Kaylee's Books were talking about Darcy Coates. And so Darcy essentially tends to publish about three books a year. And I would really like her to continue with this pattern that she did this year. So this year she published a cozy mystery vibe. Then she published a haunted house, her classic haunted house style book and then she also this year had published From Below which was a little bit of a different take on her typical story and I want her to do that vibe again next year. I want her cozy mystery that's supposed to come out, a haunted house story, and then I want a uniquer taste like Hunted or From Below or I think Parasite's another one because I've really enjoyed her and different ones but I also still love the haunted house vibes and I want her to stick to like doing what she does best at the same time but yeah so far I'm really enjoying this it it reminds me of the feelings I had when I read Near the Bone by Christina Henry and I loved Near the Bone I read that earlier this year and it was a five-star read I keep forgetting I read that this year but I think I read it in like January and I love the idea of being hunted in the woods that sounded really messed up not like me, like I don't want to be hunted in the woods, but I love like reading someone being hunted in the woods by some like creature because I think it's terrifying and such a realistic fear. Like I find it such a scary fear of mine that I could get lost in the woods and be hunted by something. It might not be a demonic creature. It might just be like a cougar, but like this could be me. This is terrifying. And like just the vibes you get, like, you know when you're walking around in the dark and you hear rustling and it just like scares you? Ugh, it plays on that fear so well. I'm really enjoying this one. It's also multi-perspective, which is how From Below is. So I think I'd also like to continue that. I would like Darcy to put out one, her, I would like her unique ones maybe to always be multi-POV because I do actually really like the multi-POV style. Although From Below had the majority happen in one character, we did get like other character POVs. This one is a lot more just like multi-POV and I'm really enjoying it. I don't really have much else to say. Like I, this was a flop of a vlog because there's not much to say about Darcy books because like they are what they are and like I enjoy them for that. But yeah, so far I think I'm sitting at a four star. I'm really enjoying the vibes and I'm listening to the audiobook and I'm really liking the audiobook. So I'll catch up with you in a bit. Hi, I ended up finishing Hunted this morning. I gave it four stars. I was unsure about this one. I had to really think about the rating. I had to put it through my rating system and it came out as a four star, but like just scratched the surface of a four star. Like it, it could have been a really high three too. But I think my overall enjoyment of this, because my ranking system weights enjoyment higher than any of the other categories, is what made it a four instead of a three. So even though I felt like there was some lacking in like the characters and the plot, the atmosphere and the enjoyment overall 
really won out if that makes sense I don't know sometimes talking to a camera is hard this one was something I've never seen Darcy do before obviously I'm very new to Darcy Coates I started reading Darcy Coates last month but I've read Carol Haunt now from below Gallows Hill Craven Manor and this one and this felt completely different to anything she's ever done before which I really enjoyed and I talked about this earlier that I would like her to keep doing things like this. This also does something I love when a thriller book can do when it can make me unsure whether this killer the thing happening is paranormal or human and I'm sitting there and I'm like hmm which one is it and I just like I can't decide. I love when books do that. Um, some of my favorite thriller-ish books do that. So that had that going for me. Obviously I love the setting. I love being <laughs> hunted in a forest. Like it just, it's just, yeah. There are some things you have to suspend disbelief with in this. Our characters are young. They do make a little bit of dumb char dumb choices. Like I would not be going into this forest after my friend, but like I can understand why some people might. I think with Darcy Coates books, I tend to have to think Maybe I wouldn't react this way, but I can see how somebody would react this way. And that's kind of how I felt like in this book. Maybe not the overall populace would react this way, but like there are some people who would go do this and their reasoning made sense to me. So I always try to look at a character as if their reasonings make sense for that character. Not necessarily they make sense as the overall person of a world. So I think, I think that they did make sense for them. And I just really enjoyed the atmosphere and the setting of this one. I had a good time with it. I liked where the story went. Yes, there's nothing new here. Like, it's new for Darcy Coates, but I don't think it brought anything, like, insanely new to the genre it is. I definitely think it's the least cozy that I've read from her. And it's also just, like... I don't know like it, it's unique to Darcy but you not you not unique to like the genre I don't know I don't necessarily know if I would call it a horror I think it was definitely more of like a thriller but I get the boundary between thriller and horror is often just like so thin and so small that they cross easily but in my mind I would call this more a thriller it really reminded me of near the bone which I adored and it has that same like in a forest setting like we could just add snow to this book and it would have been like chef's kiss like literally I think the addition of snow would have made this a five-star read but yeah I liked it I'm happy with how this went I liked it more than Craven Manor but so far I have not had a Darcy Coates book that I have hated which for a thriller author for a horror author is a huge deal I normally love some and hate others and I've never had one that I just have overall always enjoyed their writing so let's hope that this continues as we continue into the next book that we will be reading I have no idea what that is now but I'll keep you updated when I figure that out I literally just talked to you in this exact same position, but I decided to start another Darcy Coates right away. I am addicted. So we're trying Voices in the Snow, which is a series from her. It is also a zombie apocalypse thingy, I think. Like people say it's like a zombie book, but not a zombie book. So I'm interested to see how it goes. It's set in winter. It is insanely cold in my house today. So I think that I'm just ready for like the chill vibes of winter settings in horror, which is another thing I really enjoy. I think I might like this one a lot. It has pretty good reviews. I do know that there is a romance involved. Other than that, I know nothing and I'll keep you updated. I'm eating lunch. I'm just having literally nudes and avocado and cucumber and a little bit of bacon. Super simple but I am quite far into this book already. It's reading so fast. I'm on chapter 14, which there's 40 chapters, so I'm roughly probably like 30% in. So far, I'm really, really enjoying this one. The atmosphere on this is impeccable. When I thought I'd do a Darcy Coates reading vlog, I didn't really think about how I'm just gonna talk about the same things over and over and over again, because I cannot stress enough how good Darcy is at atmosphere, at setting. Like, I just feel fully immersed in their worlds in the story and then like the spooky factor really happens in that setting and that atmosphere too like these people are trapped in like 
I mean, this girl wakes up and she's trapped in this old like mansion with this guy who's claimed to save her and she has no idea what's going on, but there's a storm so she can't leave. And she's like, is he gonna kill me or is he not? And then like things start happening within the house and it's like just a typical Darcy setup, but I'm absolutely adoring it and loving it and I need to go finish it. I need to keep reading, so. I'll keep you updated. I just hopped out of the shower and last night I finished Voices in the Snow. I had to think about what that was called. So I figured I should update you guys on it. Like this is not bright enough. I ended up giving this a four star. I am a little skeptical. So if you don't know, I am making my own spreadsheet for next year because I've used Copile for the past two years, but this year I just pretty much stopped using it and just started inputting my gut reactions because I found I was always just like changing ratings because I found Copile never matched my like instinctive rating. And that's just because I think I needed a weighted system. So I decided to make myself a weighted system. So now I rate my books that I'm currently working on. I plan on sharing the spreadsheet with all of you when it's done, but I rate on characters, plot, setting, slash world building. If it's fantasy, it's world building. If it's anything else, it's setting. Right, character, I forget what I said. Characters, plot, setting, slash world building, writing, and then enjoyment. But in my rating system now that, that I've figured out those two, five categories, enjoyment is weighted so that it matters double the amount of the rest, which actually does not make a big difference in anything besides when everything else is so low and my enjoyment is so high or everything else is so high and my enjoyment is so low. That's the only time I really see a big difference, but those are the moments I think that I wanted to see that difference. So I'm playing around with a new system, which also means that I'm playing around with it and I'm trying to get everything to match up to how I want it to be because I had to make my star ratings correlate to a number on the spreadsheet. So right now I'm a little bit torn on my fours and threes because I think that that number is the hardest for me to like know by gut. And so I'm just trying to figure out if it's working properly on the spreadsheet. So I have asked a couple friends to like use the spreadsheet too with me so that they too can give me their input before it goes out to all of you guys. I'm really excited for that. Uh, I'm learning how to use Google Sheets. I've really never used it that extensively. So I'm trying to learn how to do it. Honestly, I really needed to learn some things and get myself more familiar with it so then I could make a Realmathon spreadsheet because Maddie did it for me last year and uh, thank the Lord for Maddie, but yeah. Anyways, that doesn't really matter at all besides the fact that I'm unsure about this four, if it should be a four or like a really high three. Uh, but my spreadsheet says four and the whole reason I wanted the spreadsheet is was that I could be more analytical with my ratings versus just gut instinct because I think what is making me think that maybe it's not a four is that I didn't enjoy the very ending of this book as much, but my enjoyment throughout the rest of the book was very, very, very high. I do stand by the fact, I listened to both Hunted and Voice in the Snow through Audible, and I do actually stand by the fact that I think Darcy's writing leans more to reading it physically. You feel more of that tension, I think, when you read it physically. That could just be me. But um, I still gave both of these four stars, so I guess, like, it didn't affect me that much, but I just wanted to put it out there that I think Darcy's writing really reads, really leans to a physical copy. It could just be horror in general that, I don't know, that I prefer. Although I listen to Video Night. I'm just rambling. Oh my god, I need to talk to you about Voices in the Snow. Okay, so in the end, I think what really did it for me in this book was the characters. This book does have a romance. It's a little bit of a random part that I wasn't expecting in this story, besides the fact that I had been told that there was a romance. But like, as I was reading, I'm like, huh? And all of a sudden I was like, oh. And I was rooting for these two to be together. Like, Darcy, you could go write romance and I'd be, I'd sign me up. Because like, I truly rooted for them. I liked them together. It was cute. It added like a cozy atmosphere to the story, which is very like Darcy and I enjoyed it. But I get why other people might not enjoy it if you're really against the romance in your horror. I'm not typically a romance in my fantasy, romance in my horror fan, but like when it's done well, I can root for them and enjoy it. I just don't need it there, if that makes sense. And yeah, um, I can't really say much about this book. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the setting of this book. The old creepy house with like the backstory of the family that lived there. Like, ugh, I really enjoyed that. And then 
the writing I think was up to par with anything Darcy does. I think Darcy has pretty solid writing in my opinion and um, I think I pretty much always give her between a 7 and an 8 on my spreadsheet. Like uh, I think maybe Gallows Hill got a 9 but uh, she's pretty solidly up in the higher range for writing and then it was the plot I guess that let it down. I enjoyed most of the plot. It was very slow. There's not a lot of plot happening. I think it's more of a character centric story but then the which I didn't mind. It means that the plot is just like shifted to them and I still found it spooky. I was still chilled but the very last maybe 15-20% I was a little bit like is this believable? But then like it was summed up quite well. So like in the end I think I really enjoyed it, which is why I got a four star. Um, maybe it deserves that four star because I just, I loved everything else. I think it's just that last like 15% that's like holding me back from that four star. And I'm trying to be less angry about endings. And I felt like it was a very typical Darcy ending. I don't know. I'm excited to continue the series. There is, it is a series. There are a second and a third book, but I do want to continue them. I really enjoyed this one. As I said so far, all of Darcy's non-haunted house stories have been a four star for me. Uh, I think my current ranking is Gallows Hill, which is haunted house, and then from below, not haunted house. Um, Hunted, not haunted house, and Voices in the Snow, not haunted house. And then we go into Carol Haunt, which is a haunted house, and Craven Manor, which is a haunted house. So I do think I prefer her non-haunted house stuff, but Gallows Hill was done so well that like, I do love her haunted house stuff too, which is why I'm not ending the vlog here. We're reading another book. We are going to be reading the, um, it's the one about the two children. I started it last night. We're reading The Fullcroft Ghosts, which is a haunted house story. I started this last night and I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm only on chapter four. 12% in. I'm loving the setup again. I love a creepy old house, okay? It's just like chilling and spooky and scary and like again Darcy Coates does it so well like is it paranormal or is it human? And I mean in her haunted house stories you obviously know which way leans to which one but in her non haunted house ones I'm like mm. and even in some of her haunted house ones I'm unsure sometimes. I'm like well this could just end up being humans like she just convinces me so well maybe I'm gullible sometimes but she does it so well. Uh, so yeah, so far I'm liking this one. The setup is that the two children, their mom goes to the hospital and she is in a coma and she hasn't woken up and they end up going to stay with their estranged grandparents in this like really, really big house. They've never really met their grandparents before. Obviously their grandparents had like a falling out with her mother and things start to get suspicious and creepy and they start hearing noises around the house and things that shouldn't be, doors that shouldn't be closing, closing. And yeah, I'm really interested by this one. I like the setup of the two characters and a creepy grandparent is a solid setup for me. I'm gonna keep reading tonight. Hi, I'm being a terrible person and not going to get my camera to film this clip. Um, I'm 41% into the whole crop goes and this is so creepy. I find grandparents so creepy. Why? This this video is full of me saying things out of con that would be terrible out of context but like the setup of going to stay with your grandparents and these estranged grandparents and this like creepy house and creepy things happening yeah grandparents are freaking creepy so this is terrifying and i am loving loving the atmosphere in this one i talk about darcy Coates atmosphere all the time but this has given me the atmosphere vibes that gallows hill had compared to any of the other books so i'm literally loving this one and i don't want to put it down so you'll probably get another update from me soon. Not me literally five seconds later, but the way that the grandparents keep talking about in this book about how they're such a close family, but they don't even talk to their daughter has just got me. It sent me. It's literally just sent me. I don't know where it sent me, but it has sent me and it just adds to the eeriness and like what happened, what's going on. I'm so invested in this. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on in this book? What the? Okay, I really should have just gone and got my camera, but 
Although I'm loving this book and I do think so far it has five star potential, I just had to put it out here that this cougar scene is the most unbelievable scene I've ever read. And I should probably dock points for it, but my enjoyment is doing so good and it happens for like literally two paragraphs that I don't think I will dock points, but just so anyone reads it, I hate this scene. I hate this cougar scene so freaking much. I needed to update you guys on the full craft ghosts because I did finish that a couple days ago and I ended up giving this book a four stars but like the highest four star you can get. It got an 8.90 and you need a nine in my score sheet to get a five stars. So like it was so close. I think the thing that really held it back is the ending was just very rushed for me and that it was an ending I've previously seen from Darcy. Now I think this one was written first but because I read them in whatever order it wasn't my favorite. I do think something I've really seen repetitive in Darcy Coates is a lot of the things she likes to use. I've seen a book three times now and I haven't even read I think half of her backlist. I think that Darcy has some things that she really enjoys doing and I need to take a break from Darcy because I don't want my enjoyment to be affected by how repetitive those things are and I think taking some time will help me with that. I say that but like I have my eyes on two more Darcy because I went shopping yesterday and I actually bought two Darcy's. Let me get them. I bought Small Horrors and A Quarter to Midnight which are both short story collections by Darcy. I don't typically like short stories. I'm trying to get into them. I really am but I don't typically like them but I think if anyone can do it it would be Darcy Coates because I think the atmosphere she writes could really lend to a short story. So I'm very excited to try these and I'm going to try these soon. I know that. That's coming soon. Other than that, I have a lot of- I am just excited for Darcy and I want to read her entire backlist. Even though I see those things, I enjoy them and I've enjoyed what story she crafts with them because the stories are still somewhat unique even when they take the same little plot devices. She uses the same plot devices a lot is how I should phrase it. But I did enjoy it. I had a fun time. The atmosphere in this one was one of the creepiest atmospheres I've read. I loved the setup. I really, really adored the characters. I, I actually really rooted for these characters and wanted them to survive. I mean, if you read Darcy, you know, but I still was rooting for them. And I had a really good time with it. It definitely I think read a little bit younger than her other ones but we do have a 15 year old and a 12 year old main character so I think it was fitting that it ran younger and overall I just had a really good time. I actually had a really good time reading this entire vlog. I mean a three star and three four stars. Like three four stars. Oh I should say I actually think that this is my second favorite. Mm. I think this is tied with From Below for my second favorite. I haven't decided if I liked From Below better. From Below was a lot longer. This was very short and I do think that this one could have been longer. But yeah, you will definitely see more Darcy from me in the future along with all the other books that I have access to on KU. Um, if anyone from Darcy's team ever sees this, <laughs> I would love to be put on the list for like arc copies or review copies. I really really like Darcy. Um, I've said that a million times. Anyways, I have nothing to leave you with besides that if you're looking for an atmospheric read, a quick read, a fun read, you should try some Darcy Coates. Um, and I think if you're looking into getting into horror, I think Darcy Coates is a great way to go. She writes a little bit cozier and I definitely think that Darcy Coates a lot of people could love and enjoy. So yeah. Thanks for tuning in in this video. If you made it all the way to the end of this video and you'd like to leave me an emoji just to say you were here, leave me a ghost emoji. And then if you'd like to connect with me on other platforms, my bookstagram, my book Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon are all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves a spooktacular day.